From sunny Phoenix, Arizona, this is the Police Accountability Report, brought to you by Cop Block. Sheriff Joe Arpaio's jail in Maricopa County, Arizona, is known as the epicenter for what is wrong with the prison system in America. Arpaio's jail does not discriminate, treating both convicted inmates and those merely accused of crimes with the same lack of care. Arpaio's reign has given the people of Arizona the, quote, worst jail in the country by starving and neglecting prisoners. Now the jail has added a new merit badge to its sash with the recent jail surveillance video of Arizona Detention Officer Kevin Gerster. The video shows inmate William Hughes with his hands cuffed behind his back, bent over a table, and surrounded by three officers. Gerster walked up to the man, climbed onto a table where the man had been subdued, and stepped on Hughes' neck. It appears that Gerster applied substantial pressure to the inmate's exposed neck. A separate video shows the same officer manhandling a different inmate that had been fitted with a bag over his head. The officer can be seen punching the handcuffed victim in the face. Shortly after the video surfaced, Gerster resigned. Arpaio says that Gerster's actions are unacceptable. The sheriff is sure to continue condemning those officers whose actions surface on video. This last weekend, I had the pleasure of attending the 2010 Freedom Summit right here in Phoenix. I ran into some great minds and asked them all about their experiences with the TSA during their flights to Arizona. I'm here with uh, Boston Tea Party at the Freedom Summit 2010, and I'd like to ask you about your uh, flight down here to Phoenix for the Freedom Summit and the gun show. <laughs> what, what flight? I didn't fly. I didn't want to deal with those people, the TSA uh, goons. No, I didn't fly at all. I drove. Scott Horton of Antiwar.com. I was wondering if you could tell us about your flight down to Phoenix this weekend and your experiences with the TSA. TSA? I never heard of them. Me and my girl, we drove here all night. It was awesome. Adam Kokesh, a very effective activist and radio host. I know you live in the Albuquerque area. That's a pretty long drive. I'm sure you flew down here for the weekend. I was fortunate this time to be able to drive out here, and I do it every time I can, not just because of the new TSA procedures, but because of the fact that the air transportation industry has become so overrun by government regulation as to be relatively ineffective, and uh, you know, vote with my dollar bills. I was also fortunate enough to run into the great libertarian law school professor, author, thinker, and LewRockwell.com contributor, Butler Schaefer. Uh, Butler, have you had any recent experiences with the TSA that you'd like to tell us about? Well, I've uh, taken two trips, uh, one around Thanksgiving and then one coming to this conference. And quite frankly, I haven't had any real problems with these people at all. I, I don't know what, what, in fact, I haven't over the, <laughs> over the many months, you know. But uh, one time I, uh, I was leaving LAX uh, last week, went up to the line where they had the x-ray machine, and I told the TSA woman who was there, I said, I just don't want to do that. And she said, Are you, do you have a, a pacemaker or something? I said, no, I just don't want the radiation. And she said, well, then you just walk around that way. So I walked around that way. And that was it. There wasn't even a, a metal detector or a pat down or anything. So I sometimes I wonder if these people maybe are starting to feel a little bit of the pressure, the, the backlash from all of this stuff. And uh, I don't know. It just was kind of strange. And even, even coming back, you know, these people up, <clears throat> up in Minneapolis when I got on, very pleasant. They went out of the way and I thought, is this really TSA or is it, you know, <laughs> Starbucks or something? I It's just... Did you enjoy yourself? Did you have a kind of fun for Thanksgiving? I looked at him like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, it just didn't, it, it, I didn't have an answer for it. It's kind of like, I, I, the only thing I could imagine was that they're, they're, they're responding, at least in the short run, to a lot of the criticism. And when the criticism dies down, they'll be back to normal. I'm, I'm here with uh, Bill Bupert, and he's written an article called Say No to Cops. You can find it on lewrockwell.com. He's going to give us a brief rundown of the article. Uh, the article very specifically means that, for the most part, if it weren't for cops and tax collectors, we would not be in the fix we are today. We'd probably not have this massive state because you can pass all the laws that you want, but if you don't have these, these hybrid combinations of bullies and cowards dressed as armed tax eaters in their funny costumes doing this and threatening us with fines, jailing, maiming, and killing as a result of not complying with their malum prohibitum suggestions as to how we should behave, they are wrong. They have no virtue. They're morally unjust. And in my mind, for the most part, most encounters with cops are all about revenue enforcement and non-crimes like drunk driving.